today I'm going to talk about global north and global south dynamics um, to for you to understand better from where I speak I'm going to start positioning myself uh, so I'm a white cis woman I'm actually part of the LGBTI community uh, I'm also a French citizen that was born and raised in global north um, I work for the Thinkly Senegal studio. I lived in Dakar for a year and I'm now working remotely from France. Um, obviously, my perspective and my experience is different than people who were born or grew up in Global South or are citizens from these countries. Um, so my story starts uh, a year and a half ago when I finalized the recruitment process at ThinkPlace. Um, I was very happy and very hesitant. Uh, I never went to the African continent before. Uh, so I was very curious and at the same time I was like, what the hell am I going to do there as a French white woman? What am I going to bring? Uh, what am I going to be encouraging uh, consciously or not consciously? Um, after a lot of back and forth, uh, I decided to go and assess on a regular basis. Uh, my first project for Think Place Senegal was an organizational design project. Uh, it was super exciting. Basically, the client came uh, told us about the teams, the different levels, layers. She drew a lot of flows of information, how it would travel, the dynamics. And basically, the brief was how might we collaborate better in her team and across the teams. Uh, her big uh, challenge was she wanted to tackle the top down dynamic that you find in many, many companies and organizations. On top of that, uh, for most of our clients, uh, usually headquarters are based in the global north and what they call the country offices um, are based in global south uh, and usually hiring local staff. So on top of this top-down dynamics, they are uh, inherently these global north and global south dynamics. Uh, this was not uh, mentioned openly by the client, but the project was actually about like, how do we collaborate better uh, with teams working across global north and global south, basically. Uh, this was a small project, so we did a quick research, like 10 to 15 interviews, we did a co-design session, and it's funny because we started this research and the client said like, oh, we are really worried. I don't think they're gonna be willing to talk to you and stuff. Uh, the people that were based in the country offices were actually thrilled to talk to us and they would do anything to be able to talk to us, uh, which was really interesting and which was actually an insight uh, in itself. Like uh, they actually want to share. And most of all, I mean, most importantly, they want to be listened to. Uh, so our recommendation package was basically provide and create spaces that allow allow everyone to yeah to be able to share and be listened to. Uh, for this project, uh, we had a really badass team. Um, I think Place Senegal uh, very aware and conscious of these dynamics with like some revolutionary tendencies sometimes. Um, these global north and global south dynamics are actually the background of most of our project, most of the projects we work on. I think ignoring these dynamics, you will miss a huge part of the problem and risk to deliver meaningless uh, solutions. Uh, when you work on this kind of project, uh, the team is actually a huge asset and your team, I mean, awareness is key and awareness is usually the first step. Uh, so luckily, there are uh, several tools uh, to help us with awareness. 
when I uh, arrived in at Think Place Senegal, I found out about this amazing person that is called Leslie Anne Noel. Uh, she's a researcher. She's a uh, she has a PhD. Uh, and she did this podcast episode that is called Decolonizing Design Thinking that I recommend to everyone. Uh, there she presents an activity that I really like that is called Positionality for Teams. Uh, I'm going to share my screen quickly so you can see what it looks like. Voila. This is a quick activity that you can do with your teams, with your clients, starting any project or workshop or anything. Uh, basically, the idea you have 12 criteria, yes, and the idea is that to have every team member to position themselves. This is not like, I mean, anyone can uh, fill in what they want to do. So, this is the on the left, uh, you can see the template. On the right, this is one I used uh, during a workshop. Um, it's it's great to acknowledge the diversity within your team. Uh, it's also great to identify the gaps uh, that you can have in your team. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, when you, I mean, when you're like mostly white people in a room, uh, you might face challenges and you might face challenges understanding the perspective and the experience of people of color, for instance. So yeah, you might bring other people over, mix your team, diversify it, maybe. Uh, uh, diversity is always good. Um, so voila, this is this, um, uh, this is the little activity, the template, uh, the mural template is in open source, so feel free to, to use it. Um, so the few takeaways uh, I would have for you is no matter where you are, uh, rise your awareness on the global north and global south dynamics. Uh, listen to people who are affecting, affected by these dynamics and amplify their voices. Uh, global north is less than half of the world, uh, so we should all educate ourselves about the other part of it. Even if it's not part of the mainstream culture, these voices matter. Thank you very much.